Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Tomorrow's Technician, the instructor of the year. I'm here with great news. I put on my fancy coat because I am here today to introduce the 2023-2024 instructor of the year, Brandon Baldwin, associate professor in the automotive technology department at the State University of New York Canton campus. Brandon, good morning. Congratulations. Welcome. Good morning. Well, thank you very much. This is pretty exciting stuff. I wanted to ask you when I told you the news that you were selected by our friends at Blaster and uh, our Tomorrow's Technician team, that you were the instructor of the year. What went through your mind? What was, what was your initial thought? Uh, you're probably going to find this funny, but the Blaster folks will probably like this. Like, maybe I could get some discount product, <laughs> right? Because I, I use Blaster products anyway. <laughs> yeah. But second thought that went through my, my uh, mind was that, oh, I got to tell my friends and family. Now, and you mentioned being a technician. I know you have an engineering background. Uh, you, had a, you got a degree in agricultural engineering, but you say that you have more of a love of hands-on than maybe theoretical. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I think that it's the hands-on portion that helps the theoretical portion. I've, I've done it where, the, you know, I started hands-on and then, you know, got my degree. And I think that really having the hands-on helps anyone that is thinking about doing a mechanical degree of, of any kind or even electrical degree uh, to understand where the, um, the application is. Because I'm sure that, uh, I mean, I've asked this of students many times, you know, uh, how many of you feel uninspired in high school and uh, thought, well, you know, why am I doing this? Well, I like to be able to answer that question because automotive is a great place in order to ans answer those questions. Well, why am I doing this in math? And, you know, even when it comes to biology or chemistry, or obviously physics, um, yeah, automotive is a good answer. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those classes that you're dealing with. Uh, describe your program. Well, we're a two-year AAS degree. Uh, AAS means that uh, the students are going to have to take the, the physics, the math, the English, um, uh, the social science, you know, et cetera. Um, but then the thing is, is that uh, we can tailor their non-automotive courses to be slightly more automotive uh, because uh, we, again, try to uh, apply everything that we do to be uh, all inclusive with not just our program, but with the other courses that are at the college. Uh, so as an example for the, uh, um, when students are doing humanities, if they take a drawing course, then they can uh, uh, come in the lab and draw those kind of things. But uh, our program, um, we're a Snap-on Diagnostic Certification Center, and uh, we're the only one in the state of New York. Um, I think the next closest one is Connecticut. Uh, we also have uh, associated with Subaru University, and uh, I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, seriously to have fun, uh, because I take them to a Vermont sports car, uh, then we go to a Subaru junkyard, and. Uh, we do uh, rally cross, which is mostly Subarus too. Uh, and in fact, I just saw one of my old students at uh, Wicked Big Meat this past weekend in Connecticut. Uh, so, I don't know. It's our program is is pretty fun and very social. Uh, it's one of the students. One of the things that students say when they come into our program, if they've been in another program, is, "Man, this is so. You know, I feel like I'm in a family here, which is great." Oh, wait a minute. Feeling like you're in a family, depending on the family, you might feel like, well, I got to argue with that one and that one, but it doesn't seem to be that way. It's you know most of the positive aspects. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, what are your uh, what are your students typically going to do once they once they leave your program? Uh, most of them go on to be uh, technicians. Uh -huh. um, many of those uh, technicians become the either electrical guy or the guy that uses a scan tool. I shouldn't say just guy because we have girls too. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, one of our girls have gone on to uh, be an aviation technician. Uh, another one has gone on to work for IBM because the machines that build the, the computers, you know, it's the same skill set. Yeah. But uh, normally, about uh, depending on the year, about 10% will go on to a four year degree, uh, usually something mechanical engineering, once in a while electrical engineering, or sometimes um, civil engineering. Great. So, 
mostly that's what our students do. Now, for you, how did you get here? How did you, you know, what was your path? We mentioned you had an engineering degree, but how did you get here? My father is, man, he was, uh, he got uh, some engineering awards at uh, some of the car shows and he had two patents, uh, at least pending. I don't know if, if it actually went through. I think, no, probably not, didn't. Anyway, so I grew up in a, in a car background, but then my parents got divorced and then I moved into a farming community and then uh, I worked on the farm and then I took music at the same time and I did an awful lot with music. So then I kind of wanted to be a music teacher. My, but an uh, uncle of mine said, who was a music teacher, said, you shouldn't be doing this because, you know, when programs get cut, that's one of the first things that get, gets cut. Well, farming made sense, so I uh, went to Morrisville for um, agricultural engineering there, and then I transferred to Cornell University and did agricultural engineering there. Once I got out, unfortunately, though, um, fight between the brothers, lost the farm. Then I did uh, a little bit of engineering with air conditioning and heating, uh, with a uh, train out in Western New York. Uh, I wasn't really happy doing that because it was, you know, I hate sitting behind a desk, right? Mm. And this is where like, oh, I need to use these. So my wife's like, hey, the General Motors Training Centers is having, uh, you know, a mechanical aptitude test. Why don't you go do that and see if, you know, how that turns out. I did really, really well. Um, so then um, Monroe Community College uh, contacted me and said, hey, we'd like you to be a student here. Then I showed up and they, well, wait a minute, you're not, you're a little older than I thought you'd be. And uh, apparently you do well at school, so you don't really need to come here. Go, uh, Bron Cadillac is looking for a technician. So, and, uh, you know, well, great, that's high technology. So I worked at a Cadillac dealership for a while. And uh, then I became the, the guy that uh, did the electronics and engine performance uh, on our team. Uh, and I loved it. This was uh, when we, the transition of going from the four nines to the four six North Stars. Okay. Remember the North Star? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, also, you know, I was interested in the uh, electronics technology, so that's when OnStar came out. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I installed the first 19 of them in, in uh, Western New York. But then uh, the dealership was saying, well, General Motors says, we gotta get out of the city. So uh, I could see the writing on the wall. I went to a, um, independent shop and all right, this is a flaw in my personality but I've learned from it since then is that uh, I you know I like got kind of cocky at the at the Cadillac dealership and like oh I could do this you know this I've done this kind of stuff before when at the independent shop they said well you're gonna start out by doing an EGR valve on a Honda on Monday okay I've done EGR valves then here's the Honda in front of me I can't find the EGR valve I didn't know the concepts behind the theories yet and what didn't look like what General Motors did. So that shapes how I teach now because right now I'm like, well, we, we, you students, you guys, you're going to follow the plumbing because this is how you're going to determine this. Do this, right? So now uh, with the teaching, you know, I, I always say that, you know, by the time you're done in your fourth semester here, it shouldn't matter whether I put a Mercedes in front of you, a Chevy truck, a John Deere a lawnmower, a Subaru, right? You should be able to fix it, you know, especially having access to information. But um, after the independent shop, I mean, kind of worked myself into, well, being hurt. <laughs> mm. So then, man, I, I spent a month and a half on my living room floor just, you know, gripping a um, piece of leather between my teeth because the pain in my back was so bad. But, you know, my wife said, well, you know, maybe it's time to go back for your master's degree and, and teach this. So I did. Um, my master's is from uh, Buffalo State. And uh, so then I did some teaching. And then student teaching was, you know, in automotive. And on the weekends, I worked at a good year. And uh, so it still kept my experience up. And then eventually I worked, once I was done with that, worked at a BMW dealership for a while. And then, you know, I'm like, well, I, I still think that I probably still need to do teaching. So I got a job down in uh, Alabama, Virginia, and uh, up at SUNY Canton. And uh, the decision uh, decider is where am I, where am I going to go? Mm -hmm. Is my uh, daughters ask, well, where can we ride the snowmobile? <laughs> well, obviously, <laughs> you know, one place, uh, SUNY Canton, they promised too that you know we'll help you with your uh, PhD. So 
I went up to Sudi Kenton, and I've been there for uh, almost 20 years. And on the side, too, I mean, I do a bunch of uh, work on the side, which back when the um, pandemic hit, man, I, I did a ton of videos. So, you know, like, how are we going to turn this, you know, hands-on program into something that the students can still understand? You know what? That would prove to be pretty valuable because some of my students said, I, like, I remember Dusty saying, she said, I watched that, your video, you know, when you're in the car with a scan tool, I watched that 30 times. So that made it so that, uh, you know, the students can learn better. And they still did well. Okay, so I have the theory there, helping to, uh, helping to uh, accent the, uh, the, the physical uh, activity. Yeah. So there you go. That's the, the path to where I am now. Very interesting. So the, the video uh, development, I know you're also a, a textbook author. Talk about you know, that aspect of your, uh, of your teaching, uh, your curriculum. Oh. Well, the, uh, the reason that uh, you know, to get to be an uh, author, uh, I, uh, to try to save money uh, for the students, I tried uh, GW Books. You know, hey, it saved money, but then I found that it was missing lots of pieces. Hmm. And a lot of the technology that was in the book was way too old. I mean, like, you know, talking about the MT2500 uh, scan tool, I mean, that's 30 years old. Why are we doing that? Uh, they asked me, like, hey, how come you're not buying our books anymore? I'm like, well, here, on page 140, you know, this technology here is 30 years old. And this page, you know, we don't do that anymore because that's no longer safe. And on this page, you know, and so, I th of course, I thought they're going to defend themselves. But there's this long, awkward pause. And they go, do you want a job? So <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, okay, what? <laughs> or let me think about it. Right. Uh, and it was like, well, how about you be a reviewer? So I, I did that. I had rewritten some whole chapters before, or, you know, as we we're doing this. And they go, okay, maybe you should be, you know, an editor. And then I, I wrote even more and I supplemented with some pictures and this kind of thing too. Like, all right, well, I guess, you know, the natural progression then is, right, you'd be a co-author with uh, Chris Johansson because uh, he started it and there was still good material from him there. Uh, so um, as you go through the book farther and farther, there's more and more of, of my content until you get to its uh, all my content. So that was a great opportunity. So you've been able to update the, uh, update the, the information for not far away yesterday's technology, but more current. Yeah. So that's great. That's great. Well, you know, some of the things that, uh, you know, students got to learn about, you know, like as an example is hybrids, uh, well, hybrids and stop start. Mm -hmm. I really like to have gone into EVs, but uh, it's an engine performance book, Doug, so it can't really cover right. EVs in there. Yeah, the engine guys don't necessarily like to talk about the EVs. Yeah, hybrid's a different thing. At least there's still an, uh, an ICE engine involved there. Uh, talk right. about your hybrid engine, uh, the, the, the training materials that you put together for the hybrid course. Back uh, quite a while ago, um, I developed this way to, or I'm not gonna, I, I was told I should probably patent this, so I'm not going to tell you all the details, but okay. I found a way to rejuvenate some of the old um, ni um, nickel metal hydride batteries of a vehicle that we got, uh, I think that was our first uh, hybrid. Knowing electricity, you know, sometimes you can, you know, experiment with things. So then uh, we could see also the raining in the wall. Like, boy, you know, hybrids, they're here to stay. So are EVs. Uh, so I created a hybrid and electric vehicle course. Uh, at first it was optional, but now it's mandatory for all the students uh, for them to go through. So, and then purposely uh, break them. Uh, they purposely have to figure out what I bugged. Uh, some of them have, uh, you know, batteries that, uh, um, you know, have codes to them. And they've got to figure that out too. Um, yeah, it, it's great. I don't think that I don't think people should be intimidated by hybrids and electric vehicles. It's an interesting concept that you say that because I think people are uh, concerned that well, if it's broken and it's a, a battery powered vehicle, there's nothing you can do about it. It's a throwaway technology. It's not throwaway technology. Yeah, you know, there's a new industry out there too that well, it's not even that new, uh, where um, you can find uh, used uh, high voltage batteries. Uh, you know, companies like Dorman make uh, uh, refurbished ones, and the cost of them is not, it's not that bad. When I say not that bad, what I'm talking about is uh, places like LKQ. 
they I've seen Prius batteries for as little as a hundred dollars. That's less than your low voltage battery. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Napa, you can get a, a Dorman battery there for as little as twelve hundred dollars. Uh, which again, that's that's pretty cheap. If you're talking an engine replacement, yeah, that's that's not a, that's not uh, that's comparable to to what people might be putting into or or less than people might be putting into engine work as well. So, yeah, and the labor. Um, you know, to change a battery out is uh, faster than to uh, change out an engine. Mm -hmm. And in the the Lexus that we got in the lab, the uh, the battery in that I priced that out to be around uh, twenty four hundred dollars, but the engine's twenty three thousand. <laughs> Which one would you rather have fail, the battery or the engine? <laughs> I think we'd all pick the battery. Do yeah. you deal at all with high school classes or beyond? Uh, beyond your classes, how do your how do your training experiences translate outside of the college campus? So I train technicians sometimes, but uh, I don't train uh, any of the high schoolers. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, like for instance, uh, when I do uh, snap-on training, sometimes I offer that to uh, you know the area, and then I have technicians come in, uh, train them, and then usually with the technicians, this is the part they really like. A lot of times they understand an awful lot of what's going on. So then I offer, well, you know, in the time that we've still got, uh, how about this, right? We'll either work on mode six or do some scoping. You pick it, right? If we got time, we'll do it. And uh, the cool thing about technicians, too, is I, I've ridden on the snap-on truck before. And once in a while, I'll see those students that I had, you know, that are technicians like, oh, you got to see this. We did the scoping and we found this. And, you know, they're pretty excited about doing all this. So it's just ex as exciting to teach technicians as it is to teach students. In fact, some of the, you know, like the, the really good technicians, man, it's really enjoyable to talk to them because at some point, I, I don't know if I'll ever get my students there, uh, you know, the, the college students, but technicians, you know, to do like in-cylinder pressure analysis, oh, I'd love to do that with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and how, exactly. do you, how do you keep yourself trained? How do you keep up to date with technology? I, I, I'm when I say this, I'm not trying to, you know, puff up what we're doing here, Doug, but I do read Babcock's media pretty much every day. <laughs> but a lot of it, too, is uh, experimenting on my own stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, knowing uh, electricity and magnetism and, you know, just logic, because I one of the things I apply with the students. And sometimes when I do an experiment, I include the students and they find this exciting, like, well, we don't have this, but we do have this. And based on what we've got here, we should be able to deduce this information. And uh, if we can do this, then we should be able to see this other thing. You know what I'm saying? Like cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd say probably most of the advanced stuff, it's experimentation uh, on my own involving a few students. And that experimentation translates to your more extracurricular activities as well, doesn't it? With your uh, rally crossing, uh, talk about some of the some of the fun things that you do and and how you build relationships with uh, with students and the industry. Well, with with students, again, I said you know we're a very social program, and I'm trying to get them involved with rally cross because we had a uh, a car donated uh, to do that, and we're told, well, you can have it. As long as you fix it, then we can race it. And then uh, from flipping cars, um, so for those that don't know what flipping means, it's uh, you find a, a car that you know needs uh, work, uh, you put some money and time into it, uh, and you know turn it around and you know sell it for a profit. One of the vehicles I had, uh, first flipper, was a Forester, and um, you know it had blown head gasket. I, that's an opportunity. Uh, so I look forward to that kind of stuff. And then uh, my uh, one daughter drove it for about five years, and now it's my rally cross car. And, uh, you know, hey, cheap. It's a cheap sport to get into. And that makes it so that the, the students are like, oh, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, one of my old graduates that uh, he owns the, the rally cross course that's around here. At one of these races, there was uh, 10 um, SUNY Canton. Uh, well, not all of them are graduates, but all, you know, associated with SUNY Canton. I had to take a picture because, you know, this is good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we experiment with that, too, uh, different modifications and even driving styles. And, 
even when I'm talking about or you know going on now we have the advantage of having a rally cross course to go to because boy the students can really learn an awful lot with the experience I don't know it's just it's fun doing things with the students I find that they learn a lot more in fact I think they, they learn an awful lot more outside of the classroom or the great thing is is sometimes what they'll do is like oh yeah I remember doing this uh, in class and uh, even graduates too I've had a graduate call me and I let the call go through during class seeing who it was because a lot of times past students will say oh Mr. Baldwin you know I'm stuck on this and uh, you know what would you do and uh, we go through an over the phone diagnosis and then I know this seems kind of disjointed, but all these things eventually, you know, they tie in together with uh, how they work and then the long term relationship of, you know, with the students, too, that they know they always have. There's somebody there to have their back. Once again, congratulations. What's next for your program and what's next for you personally? Well, uh, for the program, well, we have uh, ASC Education Foundation uh, reevaluation going on this fall. And then, I mean, I love hydrocarbons as much as the next guy, but, you know, there's a place in this world for, you know, gas, diesel, and electric. So um, we're doing the Green Living Fair. It's going to be next spring. You know, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that, uh, I mean, may seem like hypocrisy to, you know, so, yeah, we're doing green things. But, again, I think there's enough room in the world. So I'm trying to get more people interested in going the electric vehicle direction. When I say green, it doesn't mean that, you know, every vehicle has to be electric. It could be, you know, just maintaining your vehicle. Um, as an example, looking at mode six, you could see in replacing an oxygen sensor, you use a lot less fuel, and then which contaminates the uh, oil less. I'm just using it as an example. The One of the other things I'm going to start doing too is having a sustainability minute um, you know, for the camp sake of the campus, because I find that people are largely uh, uninformed. You know, like you said, that uh, you know your wife's getting a, a the uh, hybrid uh, Wrangler. It seems like that's going to be the way to go. Is mm -hmm. to you know hybrids. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, for some of us, we kind of see um, hybrids as an electric vehicle with a gas assist, you know, or diesel assist. So there's just there's lots more that we can do. And of course, I'm not going to stop experimenting. And then we're also going to uh, convert the uh, old nickel metal hydride hybrid that we've got to uh, lithium ion because the car got uh, trashed, but hey, the battery's still good. So, you know, we're going to do some of that. Very interesting. And you personally, what's, got, what's, uh, what's on the schedule for the summer? Well, <laughs> if I can get that LS into the Volvo and get that going my uh, next year, Instead of going to Wicked Big Meat, I think my goal will be to go on a Hot Rod Power Tour. Oh, wow. That will be an interesting experience. And I certainly hope if you go through Akron, Ohio, you stop by and visit us here at, uh, here at Babcocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to meet you. I'd kind of like to see your studio, too. We would love to have you. Well, Brandon Baldwin, Associate Professor of Automotive Technology at SUNY Canton. Up there in beautiful Canton, New York, again, on behalf of all of us at Babcocks, Tomorrow's Technician, and Blaster Corporation, congratulations on being named our 2023-2024 Instructor of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And all of you out there, let's start thinking about next year. Let's get our candidates in. We're looking for the best of the best. We've got one this year. Again, thanks very much.